welcome to Tales from the Comments, the first Nerd Sync video of 2016. Exciting stuff! This video is going to be responding to your guys' comments and questions that you left on our series of videos about superhero design. So, if you haven't seen those videos yet, you can do so by clicking right there on the eye icon in the corner to check them out. We got videos like why superheroes wear tights, why they wear underwear on the outside of their pants, why they wear capes, why they have white eyes, all that stuff. Go watch it, and then, you know, come back to this one. I think we should tackle this video by video, so let's start with tights. On the poll we ran about whether you guys want superheroes to wear tights, or you don't want them to wear tights, 71% of you guys said, no tights. As for reasoning why lots of superheroes wear tights, Sujono and a lot of you guys, like a bunch of you guys, said that tights are easier for an artist to draw. And I understand where that mentality is coming from. I just don't think we can say that objectively. I think there are lots of differences in artists and each artist will have a different skill set. So some might be really great at drawing, you know, people with tights. Some might be terrible at it and they like drawing loose fitting clothing. So I don't know if I can say that that is objectively true, but I mean, I get the, I get the logic behind that. Undecided Genius brings up a really great point that I wish I included in the video and I'm kind of kicking myself about it now, which is that tights have the benefit of being able to be worn under civilian clothing, which is not something that you can say for a superhero that might wear very bulky armor. You see this kind of thing with Spider-Man and uh, notably Superman as well, that hole when he like, you know, rips his shirt open and boom, Superman costume underneath. Yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic point. Next, let's talk about the video about superheroes wearing underwear on the outside of their pants. In the poll we ran, 65% of you guys said that you don't want superheroes to wear trunks, which is not surprising, but I guess it is a little surprising that only 65% of you guys said that. I would have assumed 80% or higher would have said it, but it's, it's interesting to know that there's a lot of people out there who still like the underwear, so. Wayward and Sam Wilson both say that the design of Superman that doesn't have the trunks on the outside seems to have a bit of a color imbalance, which is interesting because of what Jim Lee was trying to accomplish with the New 52 design of Superman was to show that you can take the trunks away and still recognize it as Superman, even though Clearly here, that's not the case. But also I think to go along with that is the idea that superheroes are designed in brightly colored costumes as a way for the reader to fo easily follow that character from panel to panel. And so by throwing off the color a little bit, you're kind of ruining that uh, ease of readability. I don't know. That's yeah, that's really interesting. And playing into that similar idea, Joshua Hammond says that the trunks feel more iconic on Superman. And I would say personally that if there's one hero that I would allow modern day to still have those trunks, it would be Superman just because of how I iconic it is for him to wear them. Other characters like Batman or, you know, like the X-Men or something, I could do without it. It's fine, but with Superman, I don't know. I do feel, I've always made fun of it, right? But I just, there's something that's okay about it whenever Superman does it. Maybe that's just me. Next, let's talk about capes. And the poll we ran on this one was very, very close. 54% of you guys said yes to capes, which means that it only won out by a very small margin. So kind of a controversial one, this capes one. And by far the number one comment on the video was about aerodynamics, as it was brought up in Supergirl about why she wears a cape. They had a throwaway line kind of in the pilot episode about how the cape helps with aerodynamics, which would allow her to take turns while flying better. And I am not a physicist, so take everything I'm about to say with a grain of salt, but this sounds completely wrong to me. It doesn't make sense. I feel like it would only create more drag. And the argument there would be, well, if it creates more drag, then it would allow her to slow down and take, you know, turns easier. But I just, why not just fly slower? Right? You could also make an argument that the cape works kind of as a spoiler on a race car, but that only works because it's pushing the car into the ground to have more traction with the wheels, which doesn't seem to apply with flying. So I don't know, this to me seems like the writers were trying to explain away why she wears a cape using science that sounds right but just is kind of, it's nonsense. Again, I could be wrong about this, so if I am, let me know in the comments. I did know about this when I was writing the video, but I just purposely chose not to include it because 
It's just, it doesn't make sense to me. Lastly, white eyes. 78% of you guys are in favor of those classic superhero white eyes. Hunter Clark brings back up the argument that the white eyes are easier to draw than full eyes, which I guess makes sense if you're doing close up shots, but in the wide shots, I feel like it just, it wouldn't matter that much. It'd just be a little dot. You just put right there. Again, this whole argument is probably personal preference to the artist and not an objective thing that anyone could really argue. Robert Lawrence writes a really great comment about how movies try to avoid the white eyes with their superheroes because it limits what an actor can do. If you cover up, you know, their face, they can't show as much emotion. It limits the expressions they can do. And this kind of reminds me of how Tom Hardy was praised for his performance as Bane when all you could see was his eyes. Um, uh, Robert then goes on to talk about Dread being an example of how that argument of covering up an actor's face is, you know, limits their performance is kind of BS a little bit because he points to Dread as an example of uh, where Carl Urban only had like his lower jaw to act with and none of his eyes whatsoever and still an amazing performance. And I guess this will all uh, you know, come to a head whenever we see the Deadpool movie and see how the white eyes are portrayed there, which based off the trailer, looks pretty good. And a couple corrections slash clarifications. Elizabeth Aylman said that the examples we used for the Greek statues were not actually Greek, but Roman. Um, and I want to clarify a little bit here. The Gods in Color exhibit is both Greek and Roman sculptures. And um, it just so happened that our editor only pulled the Roman statues from uh, for, for the video, not any of the Greek ones. So apologies for that, but it is, it still does apply to the Greek statues uh, as well. Plus um, it was a quote from uh, Lee Falk who said that he was inspired by Greek statues. So I was just trying to go off of the information that we got from him directly, even if he was confused and meant to say Roman statues. Um, he said Greek and that's all I have to go off of. So that's why I said Greek. And lastly, I will stop referring to Phantom as a pulp hero. That one is 100% my bad. A couple last thoughts before we end here. Um, when it came to the polls and voting for should a hero have this or this, a lot of you guys threw up the same sentiment, which is it, de it really depends on the character. And for the most part, I, I agree, but then Zach's mind wrote an interesting comment that it doesn't really depend on the character, but rather it depends on the artist. The artist knows what style they're good at. They knows uh, they know what they're capable of. Um, and you know, you can always change up facets of a character, right? We see this with Alex Ross, as I pointed out, having, uh, you know, drawing Batman with no white eyes, but regular eyes, and it looked great. It looked fine. And, you know, I think it really does not necessarily depend on the character as much as people would say, but I think, yeah, it, it is about the artist and it's about maybe even the story a little bit of what you're trying to portray with the character. So yeah, really good point. Lastly, I thought it would be interesting to try and take all of your guys' votes and try to come up with a character that fits all of it. So a character that uh, doesn't wear tights, doesn't wear trunks, does wear a cape, and does have white eyes. And that is a surprisingly hard character to find who has a combination of all four of those things. The Phantom Reporter? Is, is, is does he count? It's the best I could do. If you know of any other ones, leave it in the comments. And if this is your first time hanging out with us here at NerdSing, please hit that big sexy subscribe button so you don't miss out on all of the new videos that we have coming up for you every single week that explore the science, philosophy, history, and more behind your favorite comic book characters. And a great place to start is our superhero design series that we just talked about. So you can click right here to go check them all out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you right here on Wednesday for another episode of Comic Misconceptions. See ya.